are we in Capocalypse now? Stay tuned and find out. Hi, I'm Lisa Marie. Welcome to my channel, Living My Best Life. Hope you're living your best life too. If you're new here, I invite you to subscribe. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about kapha. I know there's a lot of videos out there right now about it, but I have just a little bit of a different take on it, so I wanted to share that with you. First of all, I'm gonna treat kapha as an acronym, which it is, but I'm gonna change what the words mean to make my point. It's C-O-P-P-A. For me, the C means capture. Capture your audience. If you're concerned that you won't be able to have engagement or interact with your audience as a result of COPPA, then what I suggest is that you get an email program where you can collect email addresses and you can be in touch with your audience. You can send them notifications, you can send them information, you can communicate back and forth using that email. And the way that you do that is you don't just go right out and say, hi, can I have your email address? Because a lot of times people will say, no, why? What do you want it for? Offer them something for free. Create something that's relevant to your channel and then offer that you'll send it to them via email for free. Ask them for their email address, have a link in your description, use one of the apps or programs that will help you set this up. I'll put some links in my description to show you what some of them are. There are a lot of them out there. And then go ahead and send that thing to someone. Make it of something of value to them that they're getting for free, that it's worth them giving you their email address. Now that you have it, they're on your mailing list and you can send out weekly or monthly emails, just updating them on what's going on with your channel or notifications once the notifications do get turned off if you are affected by COPPA in that way. And this way you keep your audience because come January 1st, if you don't do this, you will have lost them. You will have no way to actually communicate with them and even know who they are. If this is a major concern for you, then I recommend you do this right away. The O in COPPA, in my version, is overreact. Don't overreact. Get educated. Figure out what you need to do. Take a deep breath. Look at all your options. Don't just have a gut emotional reaction. Don't let fear rule you. Right now there's a lot of videos out there that are creating fear. Fear is a natural emotion when things change. However, you don't wanna make decisions out of fear. You don't want to use fear as a filter to look at things. It's not a healthy way of looking at things. Put the fear aside, take the deep breath, and figure out what does this mean for you. The first P in Kappa is plan. Plan for your future videos. How will you do them different? Will you change the wording? Will you change the focus? Will you change your intent? Do you want to stop making videos that are intended for children? What do you need to do to make that happen? Maybe you're on that borderline like you're a gamer. Well, go about your videos a very different way then. Purposely don't attract children. Talk about more adult subject matter. Now, I don't mean you need to go rated R, X, whatever. I'm just saying make it very obvious it's not for children. For some people, that might mean you can't use certain cartoon characters or you can't use stuffed animals anymore. That might be what you have to do different. Don't keep doing things the same way if you think that's not gonna work under this new ruling because nobody wants to be fined, especially when they didn't even mean to be. And now you have a reason to figure this out, so plan. The second P in COPPA, in my version, is ponder. Ponder your options. Figure out other ways that you might be able to generate income using YouTube as a way to drive traffic. For example, create online courses that have to do with your niche. Create an ebook about your niche or your subject matter, whatever it is you talk about. And you can offer that, and that can be in your description. And people can be sent to websites or other platforms so that you can use those. Just remember, if you move to another platform, COPPA still applies. It's not a YouTube-specific thing. It's an overarching kind of an act that was passed by the U.S. government. And because YouTube is a U.S. company based in California, they have to follow it. Regardless of where you are, you have to follow it. Now, if your country has even stricter rules, you have to figure that out as well because you can't just go by the FTC ruling, then you also have to do yours. Whichever is the more stringent is the way you have to choose to be. The A in COPPA, the final letter for me is adult. It's time to adult. Even if you make children's content, you have to put on your adult hat. Use your critical thinking skills. 
figure out how this actually affects you or if it even does at all. Look at every one of your videos individually. Look at all of the criteria that they've given. Yes, it can be vague in some instances, but they have given us some guidelines. They have told us things that are simplistic in teaching that would be for children. I think we know what when we're teaching children something. It's very much the basics, the fundamentals. When we're play acting, unless it's adult content, but if you're play acting in a childish way, wrap your head around what does that mean? And if you have any doubt, in my view, I would mark the content as for children because you can't go wrong unless it's not appropriate for children. And then you'd know that and you wouldn't mark it that way. I know it's not as straightforward as some people would like. And if your content is really on that borderline, you may have to get legal advice. Now, I'm not talking about lawyers who make videos on YouTube. That doesn't mean they're the right kind of lawyer to give that advice. I know I'm not a lawyer, so just keep that in mind. This is just my opinion. If you want real legal advice, then what you need to do is get a lawyer who deals with broadcast communications. That's the kind of lawyer you want to talk to. Not your bankruptcy lawyer, not your family law lawyer, not your contract lawyer, not your real estate lawyer, not the one who made a will for you. You need a lawyer who deals with federal communication type issues. They are the only ones who are really going to know. And don't, don't buy into all these scare tactics. Take that deep breath. Put on your critical thinking skills and really look at this, analyze it. You know, it's one of those things, once you know the laws or the rules about something, you become accountable to it. So now we do know, but we can't pretend like we don't because that's dangerous. That's where we can get into those hefty fines. Let me give you an example. Many years ago in the United States, the maximum speed limit was changed. It used to be higher and now it's been brought down. And a lot of people freaked out because I were used to driving that fast. So if you get pulled over now that you're driving that old speed limit and the officer says you're speeding, you say, but I've always driven this fast. I've never gotten a ticket. Well, that doesn't change anything. If the law now is 70 miles an hour and you're going 75 or 80 and you get pulled over, they have every right to give you a ticket and there are signs posted so you are accountable for what you know. So now that you know about this FTC ruling and the COPPA Act, you are responsible whether you understand it or not. So it's your job to get the understanding that you need. As a YouTube creator, we have a responsibility to understand what we're doing and how the platform is working. This is not something that YouTube is putting on us. YouTube is reacting to something that they did wrong before this was fully even understood. YouTube is being made an example of, I think, by the FCC because they can afford it. So this is a big deal because most of us cannot afford it if we get a fine, but YouTube could. So now they're doing the best they can with their legal counsel to navigate how do they avoid future fines. They're not saying, how do we mess with our creators? How do we ruin their livelihood? Realize this. If you don't make money on YouTube, neither does YouTube. Believe me, this is the last thing they want to do, but they have to. They are now responsible for what they know and what has been imposed upon them. And yeah, there might be a better way to go about it, but they're still learning. And I promise you, things will change gradually as they learn more and as the FCC provides more clarity, it will change and it will be more specific. But for now, this is the best they can do. They're not out to get you. They're out to protect themselves and to protect you as well. Believe me, if you get fined by doing something wrong according to the COPPA Act and you leave YouTube, that's no benefit to YouTube. You might have blown up one day and gone viral and made a lot of money and YouTube would have made even more. Because remember, they make more than you do off the ads and so forth. Another thing that's really hard for people is they really don't like change. I mean, we say we love change and new things, but we really don't. We get really comfortable and complacent. And how many times have you said or heard of someone else say, but that's the way we've always done it. Well, all that is is fear. That's resistance to change because we don't know what it's going to look like, how it's going to feel. Is it going to be harder? Is it going to be easier? So it's scary. And so we get uncomfortable with change. But change isn't always for the worse. Sometimes change is for the better. In fact, if you think about a change that you encountered in your life and at the time you were scared and worried, and now you look back and you realize that was the best thing that could have ever happened. Well, that's the same thing with this. This could become the best thing that's ever happened to you because it's gonna force you to step out of your comfort zone and to look at your options. 
The last thing I'm going to say is if you want your voice heard, you have an opinion. You have every right to express it. There are many avenues to do that. I'm going to put some links in the description for websites and petitions and places where you can leave comments. I have no idea how effective that's going to be, but I know that it's important that you at least have that option. I'm going to put those links down below. I got some of them off Nick Nimmin's video, which was a very good video that he made on this subject. And they're open links, anybody can use them. They don't belong to him. But they're very good places to start if you want to voice your concerns, share your concerns, speak your mind, and be heard. Your voice matters and you do need to be heard. I hope this helps somebody. I hope it gives you a moment of clarity to just take that deep breath, sit back, and figure out what's best for you and your channel. I know I want you to succeed. I want to succeed too. So I'm looking at this very calmly very seriously, and I'm putting on my critical thinking skills. If you're not sure how to do that, maybe I'll make a video on how to use your critical thinking skills. Hmm, that's an idea. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if you have any other thoughts you'd like to add. I would appreciate hearing your feedback as well.